Step out, step in. This weekly podcast which motivates, inspire you to step out of your comfort, step in to what you have been designed for and to do. Hello, this is David Joe. Please join me this and every 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my Step Out, Step In podcast live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Don't forget to write to my YouTube page, like and follow me on Facebook, and then one more favor: share and comment. Hope to see. You Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And once again, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Um, every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be coming your way with my Step Out Step In podcast. And this is another Monday. Today is the 10th of April, right after Easter. And this is Easter Monday, I believe. <laughs> And uh, I want to thank God for this wonderful and amazing day. Um, please join me on my step out share the link to invite somebody. Let's do this real quick. Let me do it right here as I share the link also on Facebook, on YouTube, and LinkedIn. Let's see right here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me see. And again, I want to thank everyone on here for tuning in to my Step Out Step In podcast every Monday at 6 p.m. I will be coming your way and uh, and if you're on here I want you to do me a favor if you can share the link share the link to at least invite one person uh, let that one person also invite another person <laughs> and we'll keep going all right Okay. All right.
right, so once again, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you're watching from or where you might be watching the replay. Um, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you for tuning in to episode 24. Can you believe that? This is episode number 24. And we thank God for this day, what he's doing and how far he has brought us. And uh, every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll be hosting the live Step Out Step In podcast on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And I would like to say a big thank you to everyone who has already subscribed to my YouTube page. If you haven't yet done so, please do that. Uh, cl click on the subscribe button and after that just click on the notification bell so that anytime something is posted you will be notified follow me on facebook and linkedin you can also support my podcast by clicking on the link buy me a coffee <laughs> it's only a five dollar donation um just five dollars you can support this page uh to make it better um you know, uh, to buy me a coffee, you can click on the buy me a coffee link. Um, let me see if I can put it in here in the comment section. And please comment and um, and share. All right. This is episode number 24. Can you believe that? <laughs> episode 24 episode number 24 and this this evening I, I want to talk about something um, that I actually got from my spiritual father Dr. Franco Fuchuapia and I want to share this with you and um, so let's get tuned in okay let me let me see here and please if you're on just leave a comment um, and let me know if, okay, it's showing up on Facebook. All right. Um, click on the link, share, and leave a comment. <laughs> All right. So, again, my name is David Joe. I'm a person of faith. I am a, a husband, a father to my wonderful biological and spiritual children, and I'm your friend. And I want you to also, if you get a chance, just check on my YouTube page for the other episodes. And this is episode number 24, and is Little by Little. That is the title for what I want to talk about today. Little by Little. And, um, and I want to say that for the remainder of this year, as we journey through this year, I want to entreat and I want to encourage that what you receive from the Lord must not only remain in your heads, but it will remain in your heart as your heart regulates or controls your hands. You know, sometimes the longest distance you can travel is between your head and your heart. Sometimes that is the longest distance you can travel. And, uh, and I would like to talk to you about something that will be of great beneficial to you. Everyone, everyone around you, all of us, it will be a great beneficial to us. And, um, and that is... That is a message from, I said, that's, that's, that was a message from my spiritual father, which I want to share with you tonight. <laughs> you know, th there, there is a principle that I want to release to you, every one of us tonight. And, and as I release this principle, and if you allow the revelation of this to reside on the inside of you and you walk it not only will it help you to succeed but it will also help you to maintain 
your sanity and your focus. You know, the, uh, and this, this principle I want to talk about is called the process. This principle I want to talk about is called the process. And let's look at the definition of the word process. You know, process is a series of actions, motions, or operations that leads to some result. Process is a series of process is a series of actions, emotions, actions, motions, or operations that leads to some results. And and today, I, I'm, as I talk about this, I want to help somebody out there today, or all of us. As, as we appreciate this divine principle that works in every aspect of our lives. It is a divine principle and it works in every aspect of our lives. You know, whether you are in business or you are in ministry or whether you are... Um, you know, I, I said it, 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 it helps in every area of our lives, in relationships, in marriage, in career, you name it. Every aspect of your life, it is a principle that helps. It's a principle that helps. And, and you know, most great things in life happens through process. Most great things in life happens through process. You know, sometimes too many people are trying to run before they walk. Oh, there's a process. <laughs> you know, when a child is born, um, as a baby, they first of all sit and they begin to crawl. And once they crawl, um, they begin to stand. You know, sometimes some kids bypass the crawling part and they stand and they begin to take steps to walk. But it is a process. And you and I cannot bypass process. Process is something that we cannot bypass. And it doesn't matter how anointed you are. <laughs> you can be glowing in the dark. You can have a halo around your neck. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. You can never lay hands on a six-year-old to make them grow to be 36 years. You can never do that. You have to go through that process. And everybody goes through that process. You know, you cannot bypass process. And I realize that sometimes too many people are in unreasonable competition. <laughs> you know, what are, what are the things that um, my spiritual father tells us all the time is, you don't have to engage in any unreasonable, unnecessary. Understand process. It will save you from every unreasonable and every uh, unnecessary competition. And I want us to look at a scripture from the Bible. You know, I mentioned I'm a person of faith, so um, let's look at a scripture or a few scriptures in the Bible. And. This was something God gave Moses and the children of Israel when they came out of the Egyptian captivity and, and bondage and slavery. In Exodus 34, <coughs> excuse me, Exodus 23, in Exodus 23, and verse 25 to 30, let me read it from the New King James Version. <laughs> it says, so you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will, I will take sicknesses away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be buried in the land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my fear before you and I will cause confusion amongst all the people to whom you come. 
and will make you or will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. You know, sometimes when we're reading the scriptures and we see the word envies, we get excited. God is saying, <laughs> we'll get to that, don't worry. And um, verse 28, it says that, And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the he the, the Hevites, and the Hevites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites from before you. I will not drive them out from it, and the beast of the field become too numerous for you. And let's look at the verse 30. It says that little by little, in verse 30 says that little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. It says, I will drive them out little by little until you have increased and inherit the land. Now, when we go back to you, the verse 29, it says, that I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beast of the field become too numerous for you. You know, the, the backdrop of this is when God had given the children of Israel this promised land. And the, the promised land was, um, it was already occupied. But he said he wasn't going to drive them all away. Be, because if he drives them all away at once, the land is going to be desolate, number one. And the beasts in the land are going to be too numerous with, they could have, they could take over the land by killing uh, the children of Israel. But he said, I'm going to make it a gradual process for you. He says, I'll make it a gradual process for you. You know, Israel had been in captivity for over 400 years, or 400 years over here, over 400 years. And, and my question is, why were they in captivity for 400 years? You know, God allowed them. It was, it was something that God had um, already declared, that they were going to be in captivity for 400 years. God allowed them to be in that situation until they began to cry out to God. Now, now think about this. <laughs> For 400 years, they were oppressed. For 400 years, they were depressed. For 400 years, they, 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 they were suppressed. And the truth is that God knew their situation. <laughs> you know, God knew their situation. And because God is all-knowing, he allowed them to stay in the situation until they cried out to him. I understand that God will let you live what you settle for. You know, and that is what we have to do. We have to do anything you settle for. God will allow you to live it. And know that God, the God we serve, he sees more than we do. And the God you see is the God you get, ladies and gentlemen. You know, sometimes we underestimate or we, 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 we limit our God. But the God you see is the God you get. If you see him as a deliverer, yes, he will deliver you. If you see him as a healer, yes, he will heal you. If you see him as a provider, he will provide for you. If you see him as a protector, he will protect you. <laughs> But if you see him as a God who does not care, that is what you get. The God you see is the God you get. Now, let, let's look at it from this, this, this standpoint. And Jesus goes out to his hometown. And, then I, and the scripture says that he could not do mighty works. Not that he would not do or he did not do. He says he could not do mighty works. Except that he laid hands, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. It wasn't that he, he wasn't able to do it, but he could not do it. Why? Because of familiarity. Familiarity can stop you from doing great things. And most, most people have become so or too familiar with, with our God and with the scriptures. 
uh, I, I was talking to a friend the other time and we were discussing this where we've got into the place where some scriptures have been so familiarized that we don't even get the 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 the, the fruit out of it the the deep things out of it the the, the message out of it <laughs> what are what are the scriptures let me let me share with you today it's uh second corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14 and you know most times after every um every every meeting we want to to tell share the grace <laughs> and we rattle through it we just we just it has become more like um, robotic, we just rattle through it, and we just go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and, the, and sometimes we even add our own the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with you or be with us now and forevermore, amen. And we just we just walk away from it. We have become so familiar with our scripture that what what Paul ended the uh, the second epistle to the Corinthians telling about, about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, telling about the love of God and, and the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. He, he, he was telling them that this be with you every day. This be with you every day. And we have, we have come to the place where we have become so familiar with our scripture and all we do is we rattle through it, <laughs> and and that's that's what that's what we do. That's what we do best. Yeah, and and in in this scripture, I believe Paul emphasized his his concern for our reconciliation with God, our unity amongst believers, and the manifestation in the gifts of the Spirit. Of what we hear just a rattle we just rattle through it and that is all we we we, we do that is all we, we 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 get because we have become so familiar with our scripture so for 400 years the children of israel were crying to god and they were crying to god to deliver them now as they were crying to god about their deliverance god was also talking <laughs> to their deliverer. That is why you don't have to give up no matter what. You just have to stay in there, stay tight, stay put. Because as you're crying to God, God is also speaking to your deliverer. As they were crying to God about their deliverance, God was speaking to their deliverer, Moses. <laughs> yeah. And, and when, when we look at that, we, I, I, I just don't want us to go into it, but God, God has a great sense of humor. He allowed Moses to be raised in, in, in Pharaoh's palace to observe and to know all the protocol because God knew that he was going to bring him back one day to, to face Pharaoh and he needed someone who was raised in that, in that vicinity, in that, in that environment to be able to know the protocol to go before Pharaoh. You know, Moses was a fugitive, but God brought him back because of where he started him off with. They were struggling, and, 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 and hear me, just, just, just because uh, um, God is not talking back to you, doesn't mean that he doesn't know what you're going through. It doesn't mean that he, he, he doesn't see what you're going through. He is, he's working on your answer. Yes, I understand. Sometimes it can be, uh, it can be stressful. It can be humiliating. It can be, uh, um, you know, as you go through the process, it can be challenging. But the process is to stay in there. <laughs> the process is to stay in there. All right. So let's see. So please, um, if you're on, just just comment. For some reason. Um, it's not showing in who is on here, but when you comment, I can see it. All right. So just, just stay put, just stay in there. And, and you know, they, they, they were struggling. As they were struggling, God was also talking to their deliverer Moses. 
And he said to Moses, go tell Pharaoh that let my people go. Israel gets out of, Israel gets all um, excited with, with, with possess their promised land. A journey that was supposed to take 11 days, ladies and gentlemen, a journey that was supposed to take 11 days took them 40 years. God did not tell them what was in between their deliverance and their promise. And that is where most people get frustrated, most people get disappointed. Because from your, from your, from your, uh, from the time you get the message of your promise to when it gets fulfilled, the in-between sometimes can be messy. <laughs> it can be. A journey that was supposed to take 11 days took them 40 years. 40 years. Just, just imagine. They were all excited. I'm, I'm taking you to the milk, um, to the, to the, uh, to the land filled with milk and honey and all that, so excited. They set off on a journey. And now it takes them 40 years in the wilderness. Now, if, if you walk with God truthfully, you will understand that life is a process. Let me say it again. If you walk with God truthfully, you will understand that life is a process. Life is a process. God will have you go through that process. I said earlier on that it doesn't matter how anointed you are. You cannot lay hands on uh, a six-year-old with all the anointing upon your life. You can uh, prophesy and do all that for that six-year-old to turn into 36. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> because life is a process. God will have to process you and I. He has to take us through the process. You know, I, I tell people that when you go to the supermarket to buy bread, you want to get a bread that is fully baked. Nobody wants to buy bread that is half-baked. Now, when the bread is put in the oven... It goes through that temperature, the required temperature, and it stays in for uh, a, a required time. And once it's fully baked, they take it out. But when you don't allow it to be fully baked, when you put it in the, in the market or you take it to the store, nobody's going to buy a half-baked bread. <laughs> Everybody wants something that is fully. And he has to prepare you for what he has already prepared for you. God will have to prepare you for what he has already prepared for you. That is the process. He will have to take you through the process to get you to the promise. And God begins to show them the principle of process known as little by little. You know, in the verse 30 of uh, Exodus 23, it says, little by little, I will drive them out. <laughs> says, little by little, I will drive them out. So he takes us through that process of little by little. And by this, God is telling you and I that in this life, you are, in this life, you achieve things little by little. You get to greatness little by by little and you grow <laughs> little by little and <coughs> excuse me and I, I want us to look at look at some areas um, I want us to look at some areas of consideration this this evening let's look at some areas of consideration okay All right, so the first area of consideration I want us to look at uh, um, tonight is you reach your goals little by little. And my question to you is, how many goals do you have? How many goals? 
it is it is imperative for us to set goals it is very important for us to set goals just imagine those of you who like soccer or football or um, basketball just imagine that it's a game that nobody scores anything it's going to be really boring <laughs> you just play amongst yourself and there's no score there's no goals nothing and at the end of the day I mean you, you walk away it's it's going to be really boring now anytime a goal is scored everybody I mean your team if your team scores yes you you jubilate you're happy you know you're so excited when your team loses yes you feel a little bit sad but we all need goals we need short-term goals long-term goals medium-term goals we should all have goals we should all have goals and goals themselves do not manifest goals themselves ladies and gentlemen it's not going to manifest goals um, have to be actioned and you have to action it through time and process you know talk about the short-term medium and long-term goals and you have to action them and you action them through time and process you know Henry what's worth um, Longfellow um, said something and and I quote great is the art of beginning ending now let me let me quote it again great is the art of beginning but greater is the art of the ending your goal is the beginning and that is why medals are not given to athletes in the in at the, at the beginning of the race or in the middle of the race <laughs> then what would be the point <laughs> you know sometimes we we really um, bet on some athletes who we know are going to win I mean you put all your bet on it and in the end they don't win the race <laughs> medals are given to those who complete the race and who win the race but in, in, in this context you are not competing with anyone you have to go through a process and it is little by little you work on your on your relationships you work on your marriage little by little you get out of debt little by little um, that is why you don't have to spend what you don't have to impress the people you don't like and when the bills come you get depressed you don't have to take yourself through that stick to you stick to your assignment you have to stick to your assignment and and let me tell you this also nothing great grows overnight nothing great grows overnight you know sometimes we compare ourselves to other people and looking at what you're doing we just want to get there overnight it does it ain't going to happen that is that is why a lot of people take themselves through stress and and that unnecessary competition and they end, at the end of the day you get broken fast is not the essence consistency is nothing great grows overnight and anything that grows overnight dies overnight right so you reach your goals little by little You reach your goals little by little. Number two is you el eliminate your enemies little by little. <laughs> uh, the reason why I'm laughing is anytime we bring up the enemy, then uh, you know uh, I've seen I've seen some very interesting um, posters on social media, <laughs> and um, oh, we, we'll get there. You know the, the the scripture I, I read here um, from Exodus 23, the verse 29 says, "From before you in one year." This was a land God had promised the children of Israel, but the land was occupied, and it was occupied by the enemies. But God said, "I'm not going to drive them out in one year. I'm going to do that little by little." And 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 God said He will go before them and eliminate their enemies. 
but not in one year. He had a reason. He had a reason for that. And, and I know where sometimes our minds go to when it comes to enemies. We want them to, you know, sometimes our prayers is we want them to die by fire or by force. <laughs> we kill them, die by fire or by force. And I said, I said, I've seen on some very interesting posters. <laughs> I've seen very interesting posters. Um, the other time I saw one that said that um, Pharaoh must die now. <laughs> King Hosea must die again. Goliath must, must die now, 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 now. I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes we can be very interesting. But if, if, if the God you know, or if, if God should say that I'm going to, answer every prayer you you pray by killing your enemies i believe that most 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 of us would have would have been dead by now because sometimes we can become our own enemies you know part of life is eliminating some things part of life is eliminating some things and i'm referring to the things that sabotage and hinders your progress most importantly, the self-afflicted ones. You know, the, the mindset has become a stronghold. And, and, and sometimes it, it places us in a position where we say to ourselves that I cannot change or I refuse to change. Sometimes just your attitude alone and, and of course, if a lot of people are telling you about your attitude, state and all that, why don't you sit down and see and ask God to help you change that? Say, so as for me, that is how I am and, and I, I cannot change. Really? Sometimes our behavior, the bad behavior. You know, our bad behavior is, is not allowing, should I say this? It's not allowing the unchecked. To see the transformation God demands from us. I've worked with somebody like that before. And this individual professed to be the only sanctified saint at the, at the place. But then, this individual's attitude and the, the, the behavior was so bad, it was stinking. One time I had to tell, uh, tell this indi individual that your attitude and your behavior stinks. Sometimes out of bitterness, out of anger. When, and sometimes when we have the quitting attitude. When I talk about the quitting at attitude is when, when things are not going in the direction in which you want it, you just want to quit. You just want to cut and run. Now, hear me somebody. Your greatest enemy or your greatest enemies are often not external but internal. Let me say that again. Your greatest enemies are most often not external, but internal. There's an African proverb that says that if the enemy within cannot kill us, the enemy without can do us no harm. The, the, uh, the, the writer of this quote is unknown, but it only says an African proverb. It says, if the enemy within cannot kill us, then the enemy out there, the enemy without, can do us no harm. So most of the time, it is internal. And that is what bothers a lot of people. Sometimes we become our own enemies, as I said earlier on, by our negative confessions. Then we want to blame it on the devil. <laughs> and do you know that anything and anyone you blame, you empower. Anything and anyone you blame, you empower. Our bishop tells us that sometimes we have to leave the enemy out of us. Because we can become our own enemies. You know, 
Joshua in Joshua 6 and 10 um, from the scriptures to say that now Joshua had commanded the people saying you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice nor shall you shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you shout and you shall shout now the backdrop of this was when God asked Joshua to march around the walls of Jericho seven days and on the seventh day they would, they would do it seven times and Joshua gave them this specific instruction because sometimes the things we don't understand what we say has the ability to derail the plans and the purposes of God I believe it was as they were going around somewhere just um, because they didn't understand they were saying okay oh this doesn't make sense or if God is going to uh, they, they, but they couldn't speak it out <laughs> they could not because they had been given specific instructions and sometimes that is why you have to remain silent when you're going through something you don't understand it is better to remain silent than to speak any negative um, or make any negative con confessions that can derail the plans and the purposes of God why am I saying this because in Zachariah when we look at the book of Luke, he he was he was um, um, he was advanced in age. He was um, you know uh, a servant of God, very dedicated, committed to God, upright person. But yet, his wife Elizabeth was barren. Until God visited him in in the temple one day, and and when when the Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared to him and he 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 he, he told him what God had had said concerning him. Here, before he could say anything. I mean, when, when the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, oh, I'm, I'm old, my wife is, is old. Then in the verse 20 of Luke 1, the Bible says, But behold, you will be mute and not be able to speak until the day these things take place. Because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in your own time. <coughs> because you did not believe, Unbelief would have made him speak. I mean, it was just coming. That, oh, yes, of course, I'm old. How is my wife Elizabeth going to have a baby in her old age? And, and, and God had to keep, her, keep his mouth shut. <laughs> God had to mute him. Because if he had said anything, I believe that it would have derailed the plans and the purposes of God for him and his wife. So little by little, you eliminate your enemies. It is more in, internal, not external. It is more internal. And the third one for tonight is we change the world little by little. <laughs> we change the world little by little. I use the word we because it is a collective thing. We want to be world changers. Whether it is the world outside, the world around you, the world within you, you change it little by little. We change it little by little. The greatest example for humanity, whoever walked on the surface of this earth, is Jesus Christ. When we look at him, he was a man who could have performed miracles in his own he was a man who could not could not perform miracles in his own hometown because of familiarity but then he handpicked 12 men with all kinds of backgrounds character traits <laughs> yeah and he called them one by one he didn't call them all together he called them one by one he mentored them and after mentoring them, he saw them, the vision, 
to be world changers. He gave them that vision. He sold that vision to them. And when he was uh, arrested, they all ran away, even, including Peter, who had vowed and vouched that, hey, I'm going to stick with you no matter what. Let them all go. I'm going to hang around with you. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to stick with you until the cock crow once. And he had denied him three times. But the rest of them, they all fled. We grow little by little. And, and we want to continue to grow little by little by impacting one person at a time. You have that ability and that grace to impact one person at a time. Of course, there are people that can impact a whole group of people, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands. But if we can all do it one at a time, one person at a time, that can lead to a ripple effect. You impact one person at a time and that one person also impacts another one person and that one person also impacts and that turns into a ripple effect and we can change the world. <laughs> you know, as a person of faith, I, 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 let, me, let me quote this scripture or let me, let me read this scripture in Mark chapter 4 and verse 30. Mark 4.30, um, then he said, what shall we like in the kingdom of God? Or what, or with what parable shall we picture it? Is it like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground, it is smaller than all the seeds on the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs and shoots and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. Jesus was talking about the, the her faith as a master seed, the smallest seed. But then when it grows, when it grows, it becomes big. Birds hang around on it, it takes shade, just think about it. So little by little, let's step out and persevere longer. So the areas of consideration is you reach your goals little by little. Set goals, short term, medium term, long term. And you reach them little by little. You eliminate your enemies, the enemies within, not the enemies <laughs> outside, the enemies within. Your attitude, your, 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 your mindset, your thoughts, your, um, anything that has become a stronghold, anything within, you eliminate them little by little. And we all can change the world little by little. We all can change the world little by little. So let's step out, ladies and gentlemen. Step out of every distractions and step into being focused. Step into being focused. And I always say that talents and abilities, there's so much deposited on the inside of you. God never brought anyone into this world empty he packaged you, loaded you with so much gifts, talents, and abilities. So don't leave this world. Don't leave this world with all those gifts, the unique gifts, the unique talents and abilities still unwrapped inside you. Don't. So again, thank you for tuning in. And thank you for um, listening, for watching uh, this podcast. Uh, step out, step in. If you happen to watch the replay. And
and please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page follow me on Facebook and on LinkedIn and I will be right Step out, step in. This weekly podcast courage motivates and inspire you to step out, to step in to what you have been designed for and to do. Hello, this is David Joe. Please join me this and every 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my Step Out, Step In live on YouTube, Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube, like and follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn. Favor, share and comment. Hope to see you. 6 p.m. is the standard time. All right, so once again, thank you across the replay. Please comment and share and let me know. You can also uh, support this by clicking on the buy me a coffee link. Did I, did I put it in there? <laughs> okay. So, um, and just before I sign off, let me, uh, let me do this real quick. All right, so if you're within the Stafford, um, if you're within Stafford Fredericksburg, Quantico, Dumfries, in Northern Virginia. I want to personally invite you to be my special guest or a special guest this and every Sunday at 2 p.m. at Old Nation Church, Virginia, and the address is 1449 Courthouse Road, Stafford, Virginia. Um, if you're looking for a family oriented Bible believing church, we want to welcome you. Everyone is welcome. Come worship, worship with us, and I will. Um, I can't wait to see you um, this and every Sunday at 2 p.m. And the address again is 1449 Courthouse Road and in Stafford, Virginia. And I also want to introduce my spiritual father to you and um, the ambassador of hope. And um, he comes up live or on Facebook and YouTube every Tuesday at 6 p.m. And please, um, if you haven't subscribed to his um, YouTube page, please do so. And these are live teaching um, lessons he gives us. Um, I know people pay thousands of dollars to go and listen to, but this is something we get in for free. Well, of course, sometimes <laughs> we don't value free things, but this is really, really, really helpful. And I want to encourage you to tune in to his um, live or with Ambassador of Hope on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. on YouTube. It's Franco Kosofia, the official, and Facebook is the Ambassador of Hope page. And um, share to invite somebody as well. All right. So. This brings us to the end of episode 24. Um, God willing, episode 25 next week, I'll be coming to you with 25 things, 25 quotes. Uh, these are some of my quotes, and I want to I want to bring it to you, 25 of them, as we go through it. And um, so stay tuned. And again, thank you for tuning in. And don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Facebook, um, and LinkedIn, like, share, comment, and support by buying me a coffee. Until we meet again, same time next week, have a wonderful, amazing, and a fruitful, and a productive week. This is David Joe, and I say goodbye, and just to let you know, I love you, and there is nothing you can do about it. Let's, let's meet again, same time next week.
sacrifice. 